Hi. I have been working on my 12 volts lithium iron phosphate battery bank on and off during the past couple weeks. And now I have finished assembling the battery bank and hooked up a battery management module. And while I'm waiting for my inverter to arrive, I wanted to do some testing to see if the battery management module can indeed deliver the rated 100 amps current continuously. I know that the construction of this battery bank does not look that pretty because I don't have any proper tools for woodworking use. And there was a comment to my previous video that I should not be using cardboard to group my batteries together because in the event of battery failure it could catch on fire as cardboard is uh, highly flammable. So the, the advice is absolutely valid. But because of the batteries I'm using are lithium iron phosphate ones and they are inherently non-flammable and safe. So this is less of an issue. I would definitely be more cautious if I were working with lithium iron batteries. Anyway, before I start the load testing, I just wanted to mention a couple of uh, things. For those who are following my post on my website, you know that I had to modify the BMS module I bought off eBay. Um, let me show you that. And I have to modify these a little bit because the uh, balancing current for this module is only rated for about 35 milliamps. And here we have 20 of those 5.5 amp hour batteries in each group in parallel. So the 35 milliamp balancing current is clearly not adequate. Uh, fortunately, I was able to increase the balancing current to just over 300 milliamps by changing the bleed resistors on the BMS module as the onboard MOSFETs are actually capable of handling much larger current than the 35 milliamp. So I was lucky there. But for those who are interested, I will provide a link below and you can check out how I made the modifications. I also added a couple of heat sinks, one on the top and one actually at the bottom to this BMS module and uh, hopefully it will run cooler at full load. Let me go over the test setup with you first. So here on the left is my dynamic electronic load that I built earlier. This one is uh, capable of handling more than uh, 400 watts. In fact, uh, this one is actually more than capable of handling a uh, kilowatt, as you will see in this uh, video. And uh, here I have the current meter that I'm measuring the current flowing through the battery, which uh, this is a clamp meter. It's not as accurate as a um, standard meter, but uh, it will be able to measure current well over 100 uh, amps. And here I have two multimeters. Now the numbers showing are agreeing with each other, but one meter, uh, this uh, BK Precision 2709, is hooked up to actual the, uh, the BMS terminal output. And uh, the, uh, the other meter, which is my the EM860T, is hooked up to measure the output directly at the battery terminals. So what I'm trying to see here is uh, at full load, let's say it rated 100 uh, uh, amps, what is the voltage drop across the BMS? And so hopefully you can get some idea of uh, what the power dissipation is on this BMS module. Anyway, so let's uh, get started. And uh, again, the input into this uh, battery load is from my EDC uh, voltage reference. So I'm going to gradually increase the uh, voltage input so we can start reading the, uh, the current flowing through the battery. So now let me zoom into the meters so you can see it more clearly. And there might be a little glare, but I'm going to read. Um, let's just adjust this a little bit so hopefully you don't see the glare as much. Okay, here we go. So now let's, let's just gradually increase it. So now I'm, we're just drawing uh, 1 amp, and as you can see the numbers still agreeing, they dropped a little bit because of the uh, current load. So now let's increase it to 3 amps, still pretty good. And let's just keep increasing. Whoops, let's uh, 
Make sure this stands up. And make sure you can still see the numbers. Hang on, this is a 6.8, okay? So now as you can see that uh, these two numbers on the meter diverge a little bit. There's uh, roughly 10 millivolts off because uh, one is measuring prior to the MOSFET, one is measuring at the output. So now we're doing a 10 amps and uh, no problem. Okay, so that's the electric load, uh, electronic load, the fan actually turned on. So now let me uh, increase this to 13 amps, no problem. And this is uh, actually still pretty cold. So let's go up to 26 amps. 40 amps, 50, 60, 90. So let's do, right now we're slightly over 100 amps. And uh, as you can see, we have about 0.2 volts drop across the, uh, the output MOSFET but uh, the battery itself is uh, holding up pretty nicely. And uh, our BMS module is uh, not warm at all. So I'm gonna let it run for a few minutes and uh, to see what the, the temperature is. So clearly the BMS is able to handle the 100 amps uh, current as it rated. It's just barely getting warm here. Okay, so since our uh, electric load is uh, rated at 400 watts continuous, I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit. In fact, uh, I'm going to turn it back on and uh, set the current to something like, uh, let's say 30 amps, so that the, the battery pa uh, pack at the 12 volts nominal would be dissipating roughly uh, just under 400 watts. So I'm gonna let that run for a, a little bit and uh, to see if everything holds up. I set it at uh, roughly 40 amps and uh, the power dissipation is roughly uh, 500, less than 500 watts. And as you can see that we have about uh, just less than 10 millivolts, sorry, 100 millivolts, uh, a drop over the uh, over the BMS, and the BMS is actually running quite cool. It's just a li little bit of over uh, the environment temperature. So I think this whole setup is gonna work pretty well uh, when we hook up a uh, power inverter. And I just grabbed a uh, thermometer here. So let's um, let me zoom out. And what we want to see is that we want to see the BMS to see if that thing is holding up. So on the surface side, so it's barely warm. And at the bottom side, let's see a. Uh, And it's very warm as well. So clearly, this uh, setup is uh, no problem at running at uh, 40 amps. So the battery pack itself is actually very cool, and there's nothing going on here. And uh, I'm pretty confident that this battery pack is able to power the inverter at uh, at least 600 watts, 800 watts, no problem at all. And uh, so just given what we tested before, even at 100 amps, so it's way over one kilowatt. And we are actually still running very, very well. Anyway, I'm pretty uh, satisfied with this uh, battery pack. I'm sure it will perform pretty well once I get my inverter. And in the meantime, actually, I also made this uh, makeshift charger out of a um, old, ATX power supply and for those who you know that uh, the ATX power supply actually the output rail it's uh, clamped to 
around 12 volts. So there's some modification I have to do. So if you're interested in how to modify and how to modify this uh, ATX power supply to make it uh, suitable for charging your lithium uh, iron or lithium phosphate uh, iron phosphate batteries, uh, let me know because I can certainly post another video on that. But uh, in the mean, in the meantime, I'm just going to charge up the uh, battery. So here, uh, this one is uh, rated at output 14.6 volt and uh, 10 amps, and I think it's uh, just the right uh, uh, current to for this uh, battery pack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, power it up. And uh, so by the way, so this BMS has a separate charging port. So I'm going to hook one side, one end to the charging port. And the other end to the uh, actually let me turn it off because it's gonna have a, uh, a spark if I leave it on. So the other end I'm going to hook up to the positive terminal. And now I'm going to uh, let's uh, yeah. let me just uh, start this meter first so we can measure the uh, the current. So let me zero it out. Perfect. There we go. And now let's start the, the charging process. So it's drawing uh, 11 amps, and uh, and soon it will actually be dropping because of the battery is charging up. So at the end of the you know after a couple of hours, um, I gotta have the battery charged up and the BMS balancing module gonna kick it in, gonna start kicking in, and the battery will be charged. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, please give it a big thumbs up and do remember to subscribe. I will catch up with you next time.